Assalamu alaikum students, this is Farwa Batul, your O-level computer science instructor and welcome to another video. So today we are going to discuss a very important concept of programming that is known as iterations. Yes, iterations are actually used when you want to repeat a certain line of code or in other words, when uh, you have to do a task, task is to be done, sorry for this is to be done more than one time like you have to do something in repetition let me give you an example for example i have to print a name so my name is farwa let's suppose i have to print a name one time if I have to do this, I will just write the print statement and it will be displayed on the screen. But let's suppose you have to do this 100 times or you want to see your name 100 times on the screen. So you are not going to write down the print statement 100 times. It will be very lengthy for you. The other way of doing this is to write down the print statement once print a statement will be written once and the code will be inserted in a loop. You will apply a loop structure on it. And in the loop structure, you can just fix the counter value that must be less than equals 100. So if the counter is set to 1, then it will reach 100 value. And the counter is basically going to specify the iterations that you have to do. So it will be done once, then it will be incremented to 2, then 3, then 4, then 5, till 100. When the counter reaches 100, then the task will be stopped. So for every value less than 100, the line of code that is inside your loop structure will be run or will uh, be actually printed your name will be actually printed for every iteration till the counter reaches a value 100. So this is where the loop structures work. When you want to do a task more than one time, then you put them into a certain loop structures. Now these iterations and or these repetition of your code actually done by using two different kind of loop structures. Let me quickly explain you these loop structures that we use in programming. Okay, the first one is basically a count controlled loop. And the second one is a condition controlled loop so these are actually two and within condition control loop the further division is a precondition loop it's a pre condition loop and it's a post condition loop so actually, we have three different loop structures. We have a count control loop, then we have a precondition loop, and we have a post condition loop. So let me explain these different loop structures one by one to you. So let's quickly move towards the first type that is a count control loop. Okay. If I talk about a count control loop, Here the counter value has a fixed range. Here you know that from where you have to start and where to end. So it means the iterations of your loop, the iterations or the repetition of your code, iterations are already known. You know how many times the task must be done. You have fixed the iterations. 
let's suppose a task must be done 50 times so you already know that this is when we call it's a count control loop the loops are controlled by a counter if the counter has a range set from 1 to 100 so the loop is going to run 100 times if its value is set from 1 to 25 it is going to run 25 times so the basic theme about a count control loop is that you must know that how many times the task must be performed or how many times the loop will run the iterations will go on or the line of code that is inside your count control group will run it is fixed now let's quickly move towards the other condition uh, sorry the other loop structure okay so let's talk about a condition control loop a condition control loop actually depends upon the condition provided the line of code will run by checking the condition that you will set in your line of code. So, the conditions can be set before the loop that is known as precondition loops. Where first you have to check the condition and then you have to do the work inside precondition loops. Let's take an example for precondition loops. Let's suppose I am calculating a sum of different numbers or different marks of the students. I have marks of different students and I am calculating the sum of it. But the sum must not exceed um, 50. So sum must be less than equals to 50 till this condition this is the condition that i need to check so let's suppose the sum is zero in the beginning and when i will run the line of code in the loop so first it will check the condition if the sum is less than equals to 50 if this condition is true then only the line of code that is inside your loop structure will run so here I am adding something to the sum. Let's suppose sum equals to sum plus the numbers that the user is let's suppose entering or the marks the user is entering. So every time let's suppose the user enters 20. So 20 plus 0 the sum becomes 20. So first time the iteration will run. Sum. Let's just quickly debug this what I have written here. So the first value of sum here is it is a preconditioned loop. Remember that we set the value of sum initially 0. Then for a preconditioned loop you are going to check your condition first. It is usually known as while loop that we are using. So while is a keyword for a preconditioned loop. While sum is less than equals to 50 you have to do your iterations till the condition becomes false. Whenever the condition is true, the loop or the iteration will continue. So here the sum is 0 for the first time. So you will have your first iteration. In the first iteration, let's suppose we calculated sum. Let's suppose the number that user entered was 20. So 0 plus 20 becomes 20. So in the first iteration, sum is 20. Then again, once the code line of code is finished, it will check the condition again. When it will check the condition, the sum is less than equals 50. The condition is true. Why? Because the value of sum is 20 in the first iteration. So again, the condition is true for the second iteration. We will move forward. And let's suppose this time the number that is being entered is 15. So, the sum in second iteration becomes 35. Once it is done, then for the third iteration, the condition will be checked. Since the value of sum is less than equals 50, so the condition is true. So, we will move towards our third iteration. 
Here the sum will again calculate it 35 plus. Let's suppose this time the user enters 25. So the sum value becomes 60. So in this case, when you are going for the fourth iteration, you will check the condition and this time sum less than equals 50, the condition becomes false. So remember that in a precondition loop, when your condition becomes false, you have to go out of your loop. You are not going to perform the iteration step. Therefore, in a precondition loops, it solely depends upon the condition. If the condition is false for the first time, if it is false, then you will never run the line of code inside your loop or loop will never run one time. If the condition is false because you are checking the condition before your line of code before the loop so that's why here in precondition loops the iterations may be going to run zero times you can have zero iterations as well if the condition is false or you can have more than one iterations till the condition is true if the condition will be true till five iterations, so you will be having five or more iterations depends upon the condition. Every time for another, for a new iteration, the condition will be checked. Until the condition will be true, the loop will goes on. You will be having a new iteration till your condition is true. But once the condition becomes false, so you will go out of your loop in a precondition loop. So in contrast, we have a post condition loop. So post condition loop is one where the condition is mentioned after the line of code inside your loop. You have a certain line of code and then at the end, the condition is there to be checked. So here, the good thing about a post condition loop is that it will run at least one time. Why? Because it is designed like this. First, the line of code will run for the first time. Then it will go to the condition and it will check the condition for the second iteration. So remember that in post condition loops, for the first iteration, in number one iteration, the condition will not be checked. So you will have this line of code at least for one time. Let's suppose you are, you have a condition that, um, let's just take more of a practical example. Let's suppose I have to withdraw something from my bank. So with draw, the first time I will withdraw it, at least I will do it one time without checking the condition. But for the second time, I will check the condition that the condition is when the user says, let's suppose when the user is given an option that do you want to continue? Want to or do you want to do it again? Do again. And depends upon user's feedback. Either user will say yes or he will say no. So depends upon his condition. If he says yes, then he will move towards the second iteration and he can withdraw again for the second iteration. But if it says no, then he can just go out of the loop. So it depends upon the user that what is the input he's going to give so that the task will keep going. But the good thing about a post condition loop is it will happen at least one time. The condition will not be checked for the first iteration. So that's the different be difference between a post condition loop and a pre condition loop. Post condition loop will check the condition first, then will run the line of code inside the loop. But in uh, sorry, pre-condition loops are going to check the condition first, then the line of code will run and a post condition will run the line of code, then it will check the condition. 
So this is all about your loop structures. In the next video, I will be discussing each of these loop structures in detail and I will show you the actual programming that I can do in Python, in Visual Basic and in Java uh, in order to use these loop structures. Till then, uh, just keep watching the videos, stay tuned, stay connected and do not forget to subscribe.